All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I begin my uh, contrast comparison of these two uh, Willard adjacent divers, I want to introduce a new section to my watch channel. Yes, there is a new section. It is called Nagging Watch Crushes. Now, a nagging watch crush is a persistent crush that's different from your garden variety watch crush. Uh, the latter crush is that one that fills you with dreamy feelings, like a, you're a character smitten by the new brain surgeon on Grey's Anatomy. Now, very often, this normal watch crush is for a watch that is either beyond your budget or is simply at a price you're not willing to spend. I'm not talking about that type of crush. The new feature I want to introduce on my watch channel is uh, much different. It's called the nagging watch crush. And it has three qualities. One, it's affordable. That's very dangerous. This means you are at risk for pulling the trigger in the middle of the night. You're staring with lizard eyes at the screen. You got saliva on your face. You're adorned in a terry cloth unwashed robe and you're eating a two-day-old hot pocket with questionable bacteria content in it. You pull the trigger. Number two, you had a crush on this watch many months ago or a year ago, but you managed to tuck it away in the far recesses of your brain for several months. But like an insidious throat infection, which you thought went away after a cycle of antibiotics, this watch crush makes its bold and unwelcome return. Three, after six months of happily not thinking about this watch crush, one of your favorite watch YouTubers not only sings praises to it, he in effect gives you a permission structure to buy one. My friends, <laughs> okay. This nagging watch crush was evident in my house. It was going on in my house this morning. Dude, I, I had my yogurt, I had my coffee, I was at my computer, uh, my family was still asleep. Well, actually, my wife had just gotten in the shower for work, and I go on gnome and watches, as I tend to do. And I saw that they had a watch that I had a crush on six months ago. Uh, it's the Seiko Alpinus GMT green dial now i like the green dial but i i also like the black dial so i was again i'm looking at it and i was astounded by the beauty the detail the retro styling the features the price point but i didn't buy one i didn't buy one because i want to be the prudent watch obsessive and uh, i was looking at this watch six months ago and I said, you know what, dude? 39 millimeter, uh, millimeter case. It's going to be dwarfed by your elephantine 8 inch wrist and your Popeye forearms. Number two, you know, don't buy this watch, dude. Your collection is rather bloated as it is. Do you really want to struggle to fit a superfluous timepiece in your already crowded wrist rotation? Don't do it, McMahon. So, uh, Listening to my inner adult, you know, about six months ago, I repelled the urge to buy a GMT Alpinist. But then this morning, I went on Noman Watches, as I said, and there was that green dial, and those feelings came back all over again. It was like a song from my youth. Ladies and gentlemen, I was young in the 70s, and there was a song in my youth written by Clifton Davis, who starred on the TV sitcom, That's My Mama. And he wrote a song, and I heard the lyrics in my head this morning. I, every time I think I've had enough and I start heading for the door, there's a very strange vibration piercing me right to the core. It says, turn around, you fool. You know you love the alpinist more and more. Tell me why is it so don't want to let you go. Now, Clifton Davis is not remembered for acting in that 70s TV sitcom, That's My Mama. However, he is remembered for writing one of the greatest love songs, of all time, never can say goodbye. I urge you to listen to Isaac Hayes. Does a fine rendition of that song. In any event, so after seeing the Green Alpinist GMT on Nomen, 
I went to one of my favorite watch YouTubers, the self-confident, charismatic, degenerate watch addict, whose watch YouTube logo features a serpentine dancer gyrating her hips in a meretricious fashion. Now, just to be clear, I have not spoken to the degenerate watch addict about this logo, but I personally surmise that this image is a metaphor for watch buying temptations, watch buying incontinence, and watch buying concupiscence. But I need to get confirmation. I'm mean, going to uh, call up the uh, or DM the degenerate watch addict. In any event, this morning I'm on his channel and he does an excellent review of the Seiko Alpinus GMT with sunburst green dial. He says that's the only color you should consider. His review confirmed my suspicions that the GMT Alpinus is both a masterpiece and at a price point so low, you cannot afford not to buy one. It gets worse than that. The degenerate watch addict did not only confirm my suspicion that the Alpinus GMT is a masterpiece, he said it fits wonderfully on his 8-inch wrist. So he in essence gave me a permission structure to get a 39 millimeter case watch because our wrists are of identical size. Now, did I buy one? No. I'll, you want to know why? Because I don't know what to do. There's the green and the black dial and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have time to wear it. I, honestly, I am in watch purchase limbo. Now the saga of this nagging watch crush and its ensuing torment, it's not over. It's to be continued, and I will keep you apprised of any uh, ongoing developments. And I apologize for uh, going on, but it is a new feature. It is a new feature. I went on for close to eight minutes, I believe. Seven, eight minutes, I don't know. Forgive me. And now, for the main feature of today's presentation, uh, I want to contrast two Willard adjacent divers. Let's see, which one should we look at first? So let's look at the... Uh, the SPB-151, sometimes called Captain Willard. I'm not sure I can call this a Captain Willard. People have mansplained me on this. But uh, let's go on with this. Now, uh, the original Captain Willard 6105 was uh, available 68 to 77. This one's sometimes called the Captain Willard commonly. This is a mid-level Seiko. What are these, $1,000? Are they still for sale? Do they sell out? So you can see that. Keep it there for better focus. But uh, this one is 42 and a half millimeters. It's about 47 north to north. Uh, the loom is just okay. I mean, it's good. It's good compared to other watches, but in the Seiko lineup, it's just okay. Now, uh, I don't feel I should be able to call this a uh, Seiko. Uh, Captain Willard because the SLA-033 is the true recreation. The SLA-033, which is worn by podcast model and social influencer Joe Rogan. That's probably the real uh, uh, Captain Willard uh, that uh, has been recreated. So I don't want to commit any uh, watch faux pas. You know what I mean? I don't want to watch. So today, you know, how in the heck could you have these two... These two very Willard adjacent uh, Seikos. Oh, they're so alike, you say. Well, you know what? I've had them for a long time. And honestly, they're actually, they're not, they're not that alike. They're actually more different. They're much more different. I mean, they're both retro style. They're both, both made on a uh, case cushion. But I got to go down some serious differences in these watches. First of all, the case dimensions. The, uh, the 051 Amura. Let's just put this all alone here. The Amur is a bigger watch. I mean, not only is it bigger uh, at 44 across, it's it's close to 50 north to north. This is a much bigger watch than the uh, than the smaller. Uh, well, it's called the Captain Willard, but uh, you know SPB 151. The dial color is different on this one. This one is more of a smoke gray. Whereas the uh, the 151 is black. The finish is much more uh, refined on this uh, Amura. It's Willard adjacent. Much more, uh, 
much more fancy, you know, made at the Grand Seiko Studio. The loom is better on uh, this Samura. Much better loom. It holds the loom longer. It's brighter. Uh, the crown size, you can, you got to be a Lilliputian to move the crown on the Amura. Uh, whereas the crown's easy to engage on the uh, SPB-151. And you know what? The movement accuracy. So here's the thing about accuracy in the movements. Uh, let, this, uh, this SPB-151 has a movement that they put in a lot of watches. It's called the 6R35. Now I've had a lot of these. Lots, about a dozen 6R35 uh, movements. And I want to tell you something about them. They are not going to win awards for accuracy. And if you don't wear them and they're still ticking, they're going to run slow. In my experience, they run slow. Some of you may have the opposite. You may have them run fast. I have them run slow all the time. Carlos has a slim turtle with the same uh, movement. He says it runs really slow. I told him, dude, if you track the time on your 6R35 watches, you're going to lose your mind. Because they're not going to be, you're going to lose your mind. Just, just resign the fact that you're going to have to reset it when you, when you take it out of your box and put it on your wrist. Just come on, man. It's not going to be, you don't buy this for accuracy. It's, it's, I don't even think Seiko uh, is impressed with it. I think they're getting rid of the 6R35. They're replacing it with stuff. So, uh, I mean, do not track the time on these 6R35s. You get one, you, you'll lose your mind. They run, in my experience, they all run slow, especially if you don't wear them and they're still ticking. I don't even know if Carlos still has a Slim Turtle. It was the second time he's owned it, and he was so happy when he got it. And then uh, he showed me a photograph. He bought a, uh, a like a Jubilee bracelet for it on Strap Code. And honestly, I told him, dude, I like it on the uh, the black original Tropic. That's it. It's the only look I like for it. And I think he got one. But uh, you know what? He hasn't. I whenever he goes in silent mode on a watch that he got, I in my experience, I've known Carlos for ten years. He sold it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get confirmation from that later. So the the movement accuracy, I'm not having any issues um, with the uh, the 8035 movement. I'm getting like two seconds, five. It's ridiculous. I've heard the move, movement is not as accurate sometimes. Sometimes people get the 8035 regulated. I've not had any problem. The accuracy has been superb, even if I don't wear it. Now, one thing I've never told you about the Amura. Do not buy this for the bezel action. The bezel action is not cheap, it's not flimsy, it's not jiggly. That's not the problem. The problem, I don't know if it's a problem, it's tight. It's the tightest bezel I have ever had. And, you know, sometimes you, you, a bezel could be tight because there's, there's dirt beneath it or something got caught in there. No, 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 no. This, that's, that's the default setting. It's, it is tight. There's no problem. I mean, it, you don't even want to. I'm not even going to move it on on right now. I'm not even going to try to twist it because you'll. I may have a. No, I don't. Know. <laughs> Should I try to do it? No, I don't know. Here, let me do it in the background because I'm. I don't. I can't. I can't get. I'll knock the camera over here. Okay. No, I'm not going to do it. No, it's just too tight. It's too tight. It's whereas the bezel action on the uh, SPB 151 is very easy. Uh, to engage, I don't know what it. Is. I don't know why that Seiko decided to do that. So, um, final thoughts on these two Willard adjacent divers. I got some final thoughts here. Um, oh boy, it doesn't make sense that I own these. It doesn't make any sense. Why is that? Well, these belong to the Turtle family. And so there's a couple Seiko watches that, um, well, first of all, let's talk about the Samurai. I've never had a Samurai. I don't mind it, but I don't, that watch doesn't depress me. That watch, I'm just kind of neutral. I, I wouldn't buy one. It's fine. It just, but unfortunately, the Turtle family in general and the SKX, they depress me. I can't even look at them. I wouldn't even own Seikos if those were the only two options. Um, if I see, I don't go on Instagram that much because on my feed there's a lot of turtles and SKXs and if I see too much I get depressed. When I get depressed I'm bedridden, then I'm wearing one of those like man pajama nightgown things with like that hat. I got like chamomile tea and I have to read the book of Psalms. 
So, man, that's over the top, dude. You're out of your mind. Well, yes, I am. I'll tell you why I'm out of my mind. I have two Willard adjacent timepieces, which are, I don't know, you could say they're in the turtle family. And I don't like turtles, so that doesn't make sense. Well, there's not. Come on, man. I'm a watch obsessive, which means I live in a fever swamp. There's no coherence. There's no logic. Don't look for logic once you're in the, the watch fever swamp. So, uh, as far as I know, the SLA-033 is the true recreation of the Captain Willard. Uh, sometimes the, this uh, mid-tier SPB-151 is referred to uh, as the Captain Willard. In fact, it's very common. But I just wanted to have a fun and do some mansplaining today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I would like, like to see in the comment section. What is your current nagging watch crush? It's that watch. You can afford it. You're trying not to buy it. You, you got rid of the thought of it for a long time, and it came back. Ooh, it came back. And, you, and maybe it came back five times, and you resisted it five times. Good for you. So, uh, yes, there is room for both of these. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much. Until next time, I'm out.